Are you ready? Grace, hit it! It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we are with chapter five, lesson number three. Now we have looked at quartiles. We're going to build on that lesson by looking at the interquartile range and the semi-interquartile range. Woo! So, both the interquartile range and semi-interquartile range are measures of the spread of the data. So far, we know, when you think back to the mean, the median, the mode, and the range, the range is the one that shows you how spread out the values are. It's the difference between the biggest and the smallest number. Let's look at this example, though. Let's say that there are 13 people on a school trip, and here are their ages. Hello! Somebody is two. Hello! Somebody is six. Somebody else is six, somebody seven, number the person seven, and so on, right the way up to this ancient person who is 35 years old, the dinosaur. Most of the children, as you can see, are between six and ten years old. It is just the two people at either ends, the teacher, who is 35 years old, and the son, who is two years old, that are sticking out like a sore thumb. Everybody else, as I said, is between 6 and 10. Now, if we were looking at the spread of that data, what we would do is we would use the range. Remember, how do you get the range? Help us out, Cameron. Well, the range is when you take the biggest number minus the smallest number. Thank you, Cameron. It is indeed the range is the biggest. Take away the smallest. So if we take those numbers in, the biggest number, the oldest person, the ancient person, is 35 years old. And the littlest little one is 2, which gives us a range of 33. Well done, it is 33. Thank you, Mr. Duck. So the range here is 33 years old, but... That makes it look like there's a big range, there's a big spread, there's a big variation between all the ages. It's saying the difference between the oldest and the youngest person, 33 years. So you think, whoa, they're all spread out. It's like the ages of people in a supermarket. There's, you got people in their teens, you got people below that, you got people in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, you got people above that. There's just all sorts of different ages, but that's not true for this set of data. As you can see, Everybody is between 6 and 10, apart from these two people at either end. So the range here doesn't give a very fair representation of the ages of people on this trip. And that is because the range only looks at the biggest number and the smallest. But sometimes what you'll find is that these numbers are known as outliers. They may be a lot bigger or a lot smaller than the rest of the data. When I went to school, I was in school with somebody called Mark. And Mark was almost seven feet tall. He was ridiculously tall. He was way above all of us in first year. And all of us first years, we were kind of average height. Some people are a little bit taller, some a little bit shorter. But we were all standard first year height. If you took the range for our year group, though, in first year, it would be a humongous range because Mark, almost seven feet tall Mark, would be away above everybody else, meaning that the tallest value would definitely be him. And if you take the shortest person in the year, there's a massive difference here. So it looks like there's a humongous variation or spread between all the results when we were back in first year. But there wasn't, we were all just typical average first year height. It was just Mark that pushed that number away up. So Mark would have been what's known as an outlier. His number would mean that because we're including him, it's not giving a very fair representation of how spread out or varied the results are. So we need a way to kind of ignore the outliers. And the way we do that is by using what is known as the interquartile range or the semi-interquartile range. And the way you work these out. The interquartile range and semi-interquartile range, they are measures of the spread of the data. But what they do is they ignore the outliers. They ignore the lower 25% of the numbers and they ignore the upper 25% of the numbers. And in order to do that, they use quartiles, which we looked at in the last lesson. So the interquartile range is just Q3 take away Q1. 
that is how you find the interquartile range. And for the semi-interquartile range, think about semi. What does semi mean? Well, a semi-circle. It's half a circle. So the semi-interquartile range is just half of the Q3 takeaway Q1. So it's just Q3 takeaway Q1 divided by 2. Woo! As I said, the interquartile and semi-interquartile range are measures of the spread of the data. And if you end up with a lower number, it means there's less variation in the results. The results are closer together. If you end up with a bigger number, then it means the results are a bit more varied. They really mean absolutely nothing on their own, but you can use it to compare two different data sets. So let's try some examples. Going back to this first example with the 13 people on the Sunday school trip. Again, most people are between 6 and 10, but you've got the teacher and their child at 35 and 2 years old. So to work out the median, first of all, and the lower and upper quartiles. So for the median, let's do it. Remember, that is the middle number. And to find the middle number, well, you might be able to tell just by looking here. But if you're unsure, you can score off one from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. One from the and one from the. You got it. And if you keep doing that, you will find that we have seven in the middle, which means the median is seven. That is our middle number. What we now want to do is we want to find the median of the lower set. That is going to be Q1. So if we're taking these numbers, ignoring the 7 because we've now counted that, that is taken out as the median. Just looking at these numbers here, the 2, the 6, the 6, the 7, the 7, and the 7. We want to find the number in the middle of them. So if we cross off one from the left and one from the right, one from the left and one from the right, and we'll find we've got these two numbers in the middle of this lower set. So if we've got two numbers, we just take the number that's halfway between them. So between six and seven, we have Olivia. Well done, 6.5, well done. For the upper quartile, we're taking this upper set of numbers. Again, we're ignoring the seven, that seven was our median. So we're looking at the eight, the eight, the eight, the 10, the 10, and the 35, and we want the number in the middle of them. So cross off one from the left and one from the right, one from the left and one from the right. And once again, there's two numbers in the middle. We've got eight and 10. Take the number that is halfway between them, and obviously that's going to be a million. That's not a million, it's nine, yeah. So uh, that is Q1, Q2, and Q3. It is the median, the lower, and the upper quartiles, which I will also show you there slightly later. So we just found Q1 to be 6.5, the median to be 7, and Q3 to be 9. We now, for part B, want to work out the semi-interquartile range. Just remember, the interquartile range is a measure of the spread of the data, and it's Q3 take away Q1. But the semi is when you have it. So it's Q3 take away Q1 divided by 2. So Q3 take away Q1 divided by 2. If we put these numbers in, we've got 9 take away 6.5 and then divide by 2. 9 take away 6.5 gives us, well, Dan, it gives us 2.5. And if you have 2.5s, it gives you 1.25. Woo! So that number represents the semi-interquartile range. As I said, on its own, it doesn't mean an awful lot. If it's a fairly small number, then the values are fairly close together. If it's a higher number, then the values are a bit more spread out. But a lot of the time when you get this in the National 5 exam, it'll tell you the ages of people in a waiting room, work out the semi-interquartile range or the interquartile range, and then I'll say the following week, here's another group of people, work out the interquartile range for them. And then you'll have to compare the two data sets. So this example here is just how you'd find it. Let's look at example two. And this example two looks, first of all, at the weights of 10, 15 year olds in kilograms. But then for part C, it's giving us that second group. And these are the types of questions that you get in the NAT 5 exam. But example two, here are the weights of 10, 15 year olds in kilograms. So somebody is 60 kilograms, somebody else is 60 kilograms, somebody 62 kilograms, 64, 65, 66, 69, 70, 71, and 83 kilograms. Part A, calculate the median and lower and upper quartiles, just the way we did with example one. 
Part B, calculate the interquartile range. And again, a measure of the spread of the data. And part C, a second group of 15-year-olds had their weights measured. The median weight was 64 kilograms and the interquartile range was 11 kilograms. Make two comments comparing the weights of both groups. Woo! Let's do it! Kenny, are you ready? I'm ready! Brilliant. So, for the median and lower and upper quartiles, to get the median, first of all, let's do that. It is the middle number. Are you ready? Lol! Let's do it! Cross off one from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. One from the... and one from the... You got it! You're so good at this! High five! We have two numbers in the middle. We've got 65 and we've got 66. You know that the median is the middle number. It's not going to be 65 and 66. It'll be the number that's bang in the middle of them. So in the middle of 65 and 66, we have... 65.5! Well done, Harold. We now want to get the lower quartile. So for the lower quartile, we're looking at the 60, the 60, the 62, the 64, and the 65. Remember, 65 was not taken out as the median. It was the number that is between these two. So we're still including that 65. So with these five numbers, you want the one that's in the middle. So I know it's dead obvious, but if you're unsure, just cross off one from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. And we do have 62 in the middle, which means that 62 is the lower quartile. The lower quartile. That's right. We now want the upper quartile, so we're just looking at 66, 69, 70, 71, and 83. And for this one, we can again... Just take the number that's in the middle. If you're unsure again, one from the left and one from the right. One from the left and one from the right. But I'm sure you can all tell it is 70. 70 will be that middle value. And once again, a little bit neater. Here you go. Woo! So we've got 62 as our lower quartile, 65.5 as our median, and our upper quartile is 70. Yeah! Part B, calculate the interquartile range. If I just go back here for a second, you can see that with these numbers, again, the interquartile range is a measure of the spread of the data, is how spread out the results are. And we can see that we've got quite a few people in the 60s, uh, but then suddenly you've got, well, you've gone up to 70, which isn't that much bigger. It's 71, that's fine as well. But then you've got this outlier at 83. This person here, their weight is slightly more than all of the others. So once again, we've got what's known as an outlier. So if we include them by just looking at the range, it's going to give us a not very fair representation of this data just because we've got this one number that's going to be pushing that range away up. So if we ignore the outliers, so we're ignoring that 83, we're also ignoring the people just at the bottom, the interquartile range just takes the lower quartile and the upper quartile. It ignores the top and the bottom 25%. So, for the interquartile range, how do you get the interquartile range? Q3 takeaway Q1. That is perfectly right. Q3 takeaway Q1. And if you do that, well, Q3 was 70. Q1 was 62. So it's 70 takeaway 62, which gives us 8 kilograms for our interquartile range. Woo! Part C, a second group of 15-year-olds had their weights measured. The median weight was 64 kilograms for the second group, and the interquartile range was 11 kilograms again for that second group. Make two comments comparing the weights of both groups. So, we found our previous answer. We had a median for the first group at 65.5, and we had an interquartile range of 8 kilograms. That was for the first group. The second group, they've got a median of 64 kilograms, so we're comparing that to the median for the first group, and the interquartile range was 11 kilograms, and we're comparing that to the first group as well. When it's looking for two comments, what it means is say what the median shows, and also say what the interquartile range shows. So, the way you have to word this, I would always recommend starting with the median shows and the interquartile range shows. Make sure you're splitting it up into two distinct sentences. 
So the median, well, the median is a type of average. So I would say is that the median shows that on average, make sure that you are linking the median, the mean, and the mode back to the average. Again, they're all types of averages. So the median shows that on average, well, what does it show? That's the average for the second group, 64, and that's the average for the first group, this is 65.5. Yes, you are perfectly right. So on average, you can say that this first group are slightly heavier than the second group. Or do that backwards if you want. The second group are slightly lighter than the first group. So the way I'm wording it is the median shows on average the first group was heavier than the second group. So the first group 65.5, the second group was 64, the 65.5, the first group is heavier. And we know that because the 65.5 is bigger than the 64. Woo! So you are stating what the median shows you, you know it's a type of average, and you're linking it back to the question. It's talking about the weights of the groups of people. So make sure you word it just like that. Don't just say, the median's bigger. You get absolutely nothing. With the interquartile range, well again, link it back to what the interquartile range shows. Don't just say, the interquartile range is smaller. What does that actually mean? Well, the interquartile range is a measure of the spread of the variation of the group. And you can see that for the first group, it's 8, but for the second group, it's way up at 11. So you can say the interquartile range shows that there's less variation or less spread for this first group. And how do we know that? Well, we know that because the 8 is less than 11. So once again, state the word spread or variation, make sure you're writing them down, and also link it back to the question. It's talking about the weights of the groups of people, so I'll put that into your sentence. So the interquartile range showed us that there's less variation in the weights of the first group. Or again, you could put that back to front if you like. You could say the interquartile range shows there's more variation in the weights of the second group. Both are absolutely fine. That's you comparing the interquartile range for both groups. And again, well, it's best to just put these numbers in. You know that because, well, for the sentence I wrote, it's because the 8 is less than 11. Or again, if you reversed it, it would be because the 11 is bigger than the 8. But that is how you're doing it. Give some of these questions a shot. There is an exercise in the Lecky and Lecky Nat 5 book, page 355+. plus. Exercise 33b. Just remember, though, the interquartile range is Q3 take away Q1. And if you semi that, if you semi the interquartile range, so the semi interquartile range, or SIQR, if you're cool, it is just half of the Q3 take away Q1. Again, I would think about a semi circle. You're halving it, so you're halving that interquartile range. Good luck. Have fun. So long. Sayonara. Auf Wiedersehen.